Episode 52, talking about cast box and content box with Shabun Lee. Interested in Bitcoin? Bitcoin is a very vague concept to a lot of people. Need to know more about cryptocurrency? We're going to talk about the basics. You know, this is something that people just have no idea about what crypto is. How about buying, selling, and mining? Tony, I think that's one of the things that's going to make us a little different from some other shows. We're getting our hands dirty. Then listen to Gary Leland and Tony Sakala, better known as the Crypto Cousins, on the Crypto Cousins Podcast. This week's price. This week's price in Bitcoin, $6,570.01. That's up $397.69, or 6.4% for the last seven days. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Gary and Leland here. Welcome to the Crypto Cousins. And this is Tony Sakala. Hey, Tony, we, um, we're up. <laughs> we haven't. I haven't said that in a while. I'm excited to say that we are up. Yeah, I haven't been able to say that in a while. That's kind of a nice feeling to say for a change. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we had like a pop. It was like what ten percent yesterday, uh, from like six k to sixty six. Well, Friday it jumped from like fifty eight and change to sixty two, mm-hmm. and then it dropped a little. And I think yesterday, yeah, you're right. It jumped back up to sixty six. So. So actually, the last two working days, if you think about it, Friday and Saturday, Friday and Monday, I wonder if that means anything since they were working days. I think it has a lot to do with the um, introduction uh, from Coinbase to open up to custodial users. Could be. Everybody's been saying that's the thing that's been missing. That's one of the key things. And, you know, I don't know if that's it or not, but I think I could see where that could be a sign since it was – the last two business days mm-hmm. that it popped, mm-hmm. not the last two days or the last two out of three days, but the last two business days, Friday and Monday. You know, I've never really been into this money thing, uh, stock market uh, growing up. I never really, really into it. But now that I'm in crypto, I really can see how these market analysts, they're interpreting the actions. And it's it's kind of like in the old days when they would like kill a bird, you know, and look at the entrails to see, you know, like what the future holds. I think that a lot of what's going on is like, it's like killing a bird or maybe looking at tea leaves. It's like, we're trying to figure out what did what, but maybe the world is a little too complicated to really understand. There's probably so many factors that just trying to put it into a soundbite is really fruitless. It's probably too complicated for killing a bird. <laughs> well, but hey, you know, anytime you get a chance to kill a bird and then maybe make a little bird dinner, you know. Man, and you gave me a hard time like 30 sh- shows ago because I said, throw me a bone. <laughs> and, uh, and well, now that I'm a big time carnivore, <laughs> I don't, I'm not really caring too much. <laughs> okay. So- <laughs> you know, I discovered yesterday that uh, if you want to save a species, start to eat it. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, I've I've not heard that, but I've basically seen that on animals from Africa that they brought over to raise to to kill the meat. And now, like the biggest herd of this one animal out of Africa, the biggest herd in the world is in Texas, I think. I mean, think about it. Yeah, I mean, think about how many billions of chickens there are on this planet. Billions. And and how few rhinoceroses. And hogs and pigs. Start eating the rhinoceros and then we'll start reproducing it. Well, I tell you, in a capitalist society, I guess that's what happens. But I think you could be asking for trouble there, Tony. I'm not recommending killing rhinoceroses. So I think you could be in big I mean, trouble you know, I'm there. Always, I'm always t- taking these risks. <laughs> You're taking a big risk there. Hey, I saw something exciting the other day. Facebook now is accepting ads. We both saw that, like, was it Thursday that we saw that? We saw that when we were on a show and we saw that. I don't know. We saw that and we talked about it a little bit. And boy. Well, you placed an ad right away, like the same day. We have, well, we had an ad that was rejected. So we had a bunch of ads sitting in the queue. For BitBlock Boom. For BitBlock Boom because, you know, we have this conference that we're imparting information to help people avoid crypto scams. Ironically, we can't advertise that. Do you see the irony there? So, yes. so because of the blanket ban i mean everything was banned yeah it's so like everything if you had the word crypto in your ad and of course nobody's looking at it you know they're just scanning crypto bitcoin they're using their ai 
software that just says, look for the word crypto. So our ads were, were banned. I got back on there. I filled out a few forms. What I kind prompt, of forms did you fill out? What did it? What you know, did just it? online forms that basically said, you know, what's your business model? What are you doing? What legal entities are you? Uh, you know, do you have any licenses? You, know, well, you don't have to fill that out, though, for regular uh, ads on Facebook. Not for regular ads. Only if you're trying to a- advertise something that might have the word crypto in it or okay. Bitcoin in it. So we filled out those ads. We actually had to get our websites certified, which – means uh, putting a bit of HTML code inside the site to show that we really owned it, which that makes oh. sense. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that you had to do that too. Yeah, so we did that. And uh, when we got our, everything was approved. And then we started running again and then we were rock and roll. Did you just have to do that on Bitblock Boom or did we have to do it on Crypto Cousins too? Or I wasn't taking any chance. I did it on pretty much anything that we owned. Uh, four Minute Crypto, Bitblock Boom. Okay, I, I just didn't know. Yeah, I was. I went for it, you know. While I'm uploading. while you're doing it, you just said, "Let's get it all done." Let me just get it all done, and uh, so we've got all that. It's something that's in the Facebook advertising uh, back end, and maybe it had been there for a long time, but it, we had never re- required to have it. So we did that, and uh, right away, one of our boosted ads advertising for a Bitblock Boom conference uh, started running, and then a few hours later, it was rejected. What do you mean? <laughs> so they approved it. And then four hours or three hours later said, oh, that's rejected. Yeah. So something else happened. And so uh, I guess, I don't know, one department wasn't talking to another department. I don't know what happened. So uh, they give you a link to click to say, if you want a manual review. And so I clicked the manual review and I said, hey, guys, (laughs) this is why you shouldn't. Uh, We already got approved and what's going on. And then a few hours later. It was actually within the hour it started running again. So now the ads for BitBlock Boom are running on Facebook. Yes. We're reaching out to Bitcoin people. We're reaching out to crypto enthusiasts. We're reaching out to uh, people who are interested in uh, new technology. We have already tailored a custom audience for Facebook. We had that done a long time ago. And so we're reaching out to them, uh, you know, focusing mostly on Facebook users uh, within the um, Texas region and a couple of other um, large metropolitan areas. I guess I'm giving away the secret sauce. We do some very sophisticated work here. We work with Dennis Yu, who Dennis Yu has trained us to do uh, Facebook advertising, and we do it very well, in fact. Yeah, he's one of the world's biggest Facebook marketers, I guess you could say. So now we have uh, he's Bitblock not that Boom. Big. He's a pretty trim guy, actually. Yeah, he's but not that big. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, yeah, yeah, that's correct. So actually, I think we've done pretty well with Bitblock Boom. If you think about the fact that we have not been able to advertise it anywhere because <laughs> of the crypto, the crypto Bing. ban. Bing jumped on the bandwagon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not that so we we're going to advertise on Bing. So we haven't been able to advertise it anywhere really, except for like emailing people and talking to them and and posting it on our pages. So I know that uh, the Super Conference, which had thirty five hundred people earlier in the year, they canceled their one for September because they weren't able to advertise it, and hence they weren't able to get uh, an audience. And I've seen several other cancel. So I feel pretty good about Pit Block Boom. Well, we've had to work our tails off, but we have done very well, considering that we're content marketers and we understand <laughs> building an audience and advertising in a way that doesn't require payment. We were able to survive, but uh, no, it's really it's a tough it's a tough it's a Bitcoin winter out there. I mean, a huge conference that had Andreas Antonopoulos speaking in San Francisco was canceled like a month or two ago. I mean, I was like looking at that. I was like, wait a second. I mean, that San Francisco and it's Andreas Antonopoulos. And they, they're like, oh, we canceled for lack of interest. I was like, whoa. And then Richard's conference. I mean, Richard yeah. Jacobs had two hotels. He had to do a second hotel in March. And that was crazy. So, um, and then in September, uh, there wasn't an, enough interest. And so we are in a Bitcoin crypto winter. People are looking forward to the. Um, making money with crypto. And so the, we're getting the people who are hardcore. They want to learn about the technology. And so uh, we're excited. It's coming up in about 11 days on July 14th, uh, located in Dallas or actually the town of Addison uh, at the hotel called the Renaissance, which is a beautiful hotel. It's quite beautiful. If you look at the website, you see the pictures. It's absolutely gorgeous. We're going to have a really great time. And of course, if there's Bitcoin, 
uh, there's going to be carnivores. And so we've pretty much, I think maybe the most popular, most famous carnivores on the planet will be there. We've got Pierre Richard uh, coming in from New York. We have Bitstein or Michael Goldstein coming up from Austin. And uh, Gold, uh, Bitstein was featured in an amazing article on The Guardian last month. And they talked all about uh, the Bitcoin carnivores. And so he's well famous as a Bitcoin carnivore. And of course, we would be remiss to say to, uh, to forget to say that Saifedean Amos is coming in to talk about the Bitcoin standard, which is his book on Bitcoin, talking about how Bitcoin is the new standard, like the gold standard, uh, to replace uh, inflationary money like the dollar or any other fiat currencies, like the Bolivar, for instance. Friday, the Bolivar hit a new milestone. Uh, it costs one million Bolivars to buy a cup of coffee. Mm, nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So exactly. you got to kind of like take a wheelbarrow with you into Starbucks to get that cup of coffee. Exactly. Exactly. You have to open, they have to widen the doors to get all the money in there. So the site for that is bitblockboom.com if anyone wants to check it out. And that's in July 14th. So, I mean, that's coming July up. July 14th coming up. 11 exactly. days away. Mm -hmm. But we're, we're very blessed because we've had a great sponsorship for the conference. Uh, Crypto Unicorn Money jumped on board, became our platinum sponsor. And uh, basically, if it wasn't for the support of Casey and Crypto Unicorn Money, we might have gotten discouraged as well and said, oh, I don't know if we should do this conference. But no, we, we forged ahead with it. It's going to be a great conference. We're having a uh, conference on si Saturday and we're having a Bitcoin brunch on Sunday in Addison as well for people who attended the conference. Excellent. That sounds excellent to me. You hey, want to tell folks the, the discount code? Yeah, I do. It's Cousins, C-O-U-S-I-N-S. -S. If you use the discount code Cousins, you will get 50% off your ticket price. There you go. So Including make sure. just saved you $150. So make sure and use that discount code, and we hope to see you there. So uh, make sure and check it out, bitblockboom.com, and use Cousins. And uh, Casey's site was cryptounicorn.money if you want to see our sponsors page. Hey, Tony, we haven't had one of these in a long time, but we have a voice message today from Cousin David in Indiana. Cousin David. Let's, uh, let's go to that question real quick. Hi, guys. This is David from Indiana. Love your show. I have a question about ASIC miners. I have three ant miner S9s, and I've noticed on occasion that they're sometimes cool. The, the air coming out of them is cool. It appears that they're not they're not really doing much. Uh, on other, at other times, they there's a lot of hot air coming out of them. So I was wondering if you had an idea as to why that may be or why they appear to be almost idle at times. It's not like I'm not receiving rewards because I am, but uh, it's just a little strange that sometimes they appear to be not really doing anything. Anyway, love to hear your thoughts on that. Thanks. Love your show. Thank you. Bye. Okay, Tony. Why are his three ant miners cool and not blowing hot air? Some might say that's a really great problem to have. <laughs> if your ASICs are blowing cool air, not hot air. Or if they were uh, quiet, that would be the other great problem. <laughs> quiet, too. <laughs> Suddenly they're quiet. But unfortunately, quiet and blowing cool air uh, usually means they're not doing their job. And so I would check the web interface to see if those cool times are uh, correlated with less hashing or if the network is dropping. My guess is that there's some kind of connectivity issue. And I know when our GPU miners are not mining, they may be on, the power's on, the system's running. But if they're not running an algorithm, they're just idling, basically. Uh, then they cool down pretty quickly. So uh, I would check the network connectivity. And while it may be some local networking, maybe your if you have them on Wi-Fi or if your internet service is spotty, or it could be uh, more of a general outage in your region because Cousin David is in Indiana and uh, we, we're not sure what that looks like, what the uh, internet there looks like, but I'm pretty sure it's uh, not as good as the Big D. Sorry, Indiana. Sorry, Indiana. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but that's a good problem, some people would say. For sure. So if you have a question for us, 
You can call it in at 747-777-9471. That's 747-779-471. We like to get voice messages. We just have had trouble finding time to get them on the show lately. Right. Or you right. can send us an email question at thecryptocousins at gmail.com. Either way. Either way. We just uh, Our shows run so long as it is, we have a hard time squeezing them in there. Hey, why don't we just go jump straight to the interview today with Shaban Lee from uh, she's the uh, head of acquisitions at Castbox and Content Box. This was a great find. This was you, Gary. You found uh, the um, this whole intersection. It's this linkage of podcasting and crypto. And uh, I well, think I'm into both of those. So. You're into both, and I, we're probably the first crypto people to uh, have uh, Shiban Lee on. We're and not. Talk about, <laughs> oh, oh, we're almost one of the first people to have <laughs> and talk about uh, this intersection between the two. Uh, Shiban Lee has uh, got her bachelor's degree in biology from the Peking University, uh, and that is like the MIT of uh, China. So that got her a job, that landed her a job at Google, for nine years. So uh, we interviewed her. She's a really bright, really, really bright person and uh, had some really great things to say about uh, how CastBox grows and how they have grown from like nothing to, to, within two years to this global plug, podcast platform that enables people to easily find, access, and create and listen to podcasts. It not only works on Android or iOS, but in the desktop and in the car and smart home devices. Now, I only have a car device yet, but uh, it sounds like uh, that is just amazing. Yeah, yeah, it was a good interview. So why don't we just go uh, straight to the interview? And by the way, this is not a crypto center stage show. We weren't paid for this interview. We just found this interesting. So I, I don't want anyone to think we were paid for this and we're not claiming it. Cause... Oh, no, this is this is a great crossover between crypto and the uh, podcasting arena. Okay, well, let's go to the interview. Well, thanks for joining us on today's show. We're really kind of excited about uh, since we're into I'm into podcasting and Tony and I do a podcast and we like crypto. We definitely were interested in Castbox. Can you can you just tell us briefly about Castbox and go into it? Okay, so my name is Shubin, and I'm come from Castbox. So Castbox is actually a audio aggregation platform, so which focus on podcasts and like on demand radios and audiobooks. So now we already got 50 million audio content, and our user have already reached 17 million. Yeah, so our content. Uh, available in over 175 countries and cover more than 17 languages. So we are like kind of a new company because we just founded in 2016. But within uh, two we two years, we have already grown really fast. I think we are the fastest growth company within like audio digital content industry. And now we are top three in news and magazine category in Google Play US. Yeah. That's fascinating. Can you explain what is so unique about CastBox that you grew so fast? Mm, I think we got a like really talented team, you know, so this team is really tech savvy. So we have some like unique features that our competitors don't have, for example. So we offer uh, uh, in audio search function. So that means, so for example, when we are doing this interview for maybe 30 minutes or, or one hour, but you only like interest in one part of this interview. You can just type the phrase you're interested in and our system will help you to locate which time spot this topic appears. And you can just go and directly be located into that time slot. And so you can start from which the part you're interested in. That will oh, make, that's amazing. make so you save a lot of time. Yeah, yeah. Upload it to the system, it, it converts to text and understands what Yeah, it's. yeah, that is. Yeah, exactly. The, that is based on an NLP like technology. So that's like speech to text. So I can do that in the podcast episode itself? 
Yeah, for, for sure. So, for example, you upload your own podcast here, and so you, you for example, you mentioned my name is Tony or my name is Gary, so I, I search Gary, so I just go, okay, so which is the first phrase and the second phrase, the, the Tony or Gary appears. So maybe I, I can only listen to Tony or lo- only listen to Gary. <laughs> <laughs> where would I do that? I mean, I've been to your site quite a few times. Uh, where would I do that at on your site? I have not, I have not seen that feature. Uh, it's not on the website. You okay. can just have that feature in in like Android or iOS app. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. That's why I haven't seen it then. I, I've really been using it online. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing is the like personalized recommendation. So which is based on TensorFlow technology. That's uh, that is like a machine learning technology. So we will just recommend you. So the thing you are interested in and you will be interested in. So based on your like listening history. So that is similar to YouTube. So after that technology launch, our like average listening time for audience have already reached 100 uh, minutes per person one day. Yeah. So you said that uh, CastBox was uh, available in how many countries? 170? Uh, yeah. Is it available in China? 175 countries. Is it available in China? Oh, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm afraid. I'm afraid it's not quite like as like as useful in in China. As, uh, it's not that easy to be used in China compared, for example, in the U.S. or other countries. Just because we use a lot of like features based on maybe. Google service and Amazon cloud, so which is not quite accessible in China. Yeah, so if people in China want to use that, they need to use a VPN. Okay, I just was I just was curious. They, uh, you know what? I've been messing around with the the site ever since we've talked, and I tell you, there are a couple of things on here I really really do like. Number one, I love how I can go with my app on my uh, phone, my iPhone. I can go to your site and click one button, and it imports all my subscriptions out of iTunes into CastBox. I think that's just fantastic. I've, I don't know. I've not seen that. Maybe someone else does it, but I've not seen that. I think that's a great tool. Yeah, so the, the sync up function is really easy for us, and we also convert a lot of iTunes podcast users to our platform. <laughs> well, it makes it so easy. I mean, you press one button. And everything you listen to is there. And the other thing I really do like, and it's really not that complicated of a feature, I just haven't seen it again, is your share button for Twitter, how that shows up on Twitter. I mean, everybody's got a share button for Twitter, but when I share at a cast box on Twitter, it not only puts in the episode that I'm sharing, but it also, under that episode, it gives them like the next five. So they could sit there on Twitter and listen for quite a while if they wanted to. Yeah. So actually why we can have all these like features, that is because we really value the user feedback, you know. So within these two years, we have already received 200,000 user feedback and we answer that manually one by one within 24 hours. Wow. Yeah, and all the features they request, we summarize it, and like we we just put a pipeline and give all the features what our audience want. Yeah. Well, now what really originally got me looking at Castbox was the mm-hmm. fact that I saw people could donate money to podcasts that they liked. They could donate crypto. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ethereum or Box Token. Yeah, yeah, we just integrate the the wallet into Castbox. Yeah, so actually we just launched the content box, which is, and the first thing for us is to just like integrate the box into the wallet, so people can donate box to you if you like, if they like your podcast. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about this crypto donating for a minute. First. Mm. Tell me about the box token, because I don't understand what the box token is. I tried to get some, to be honest with you, and I put in the address that it gave me, and I, I never got it. I couldn't figure it out. Uh, I'm not. It might have been me. It might have just been me. So, But tell us about the box token, how we get it. Uh, why are you using it instead of just Ethereum? Just briefly go over the box token. Okay, so for the box token, so we do not have a like official ICO 
because we just finish our pre-sale and all the thing I just like be acquired by those like uh, top tier uh, VC fundings. So we do not have the uh, public ICO. So we we done the pre-sale for for some of the box tokens, and also we have done some like airdrop program. So I think that is what you might join before, but now the, the airdrop are, are closed. Um, but I think we will get listed in exchange soon. So after that, people can get box in the market. And also we just like design the like incentive program. That means uh, in the near future. So for example, as if you are an audience, for example, so you go to listen to podcast, you give uh, your comments, for example, you share the content and you help us, for example, to report spam. So you done some different contribution to the community so you can get bugs as reward. Okay, so it can be a donation, it can be payment for, for helping out. Yeah, yeah. So for the time you contribute as the audience or just like for the donation you get from your audience. Well, on the podcast, okay, Let's use our podcast, for instance. We have, you know, the Crypto Cousins podcast and the 4-Minute Crypto podcast, and they're both on CastBox. How do we claim those podcasts so that you know they're ours? I, I didn't see a way to say, hey, CastBox, these are my podcasts. They were on there already. So I, I didn't see a way to go, hey, CastBox, these are my podcasts. I want you to uh, put money in my wallet if someone likes my podcast. How do we claim those? I didn't see a system on there for that. I mean, I'm sure there must be one that I couldn't find. Yeah, you need to like uh, register and provide us your login information and also provide us your address. What do we just email that to you? Yeah, for sure. On the uh, on the okay, so we just we just go to the site and email you and say, hey, we own yeah. Crypto Cousins. Here's our email address, and then. Then that starts a communication conversation with you about getting that uh, ownership of it. So we have contact at castbox.fm. So for all the questions, you can just directly go to that email, send an email to that address. Or if you are like podcaster, you would like to discuss the, the, your channel or you want to discuss uh, like a uh, marketing promotion thing, uh, you can go to podcaster at castbox.fm. But you just need to remember maybe contact at castbox.fm. So all the questions will be answered manually one by one. I think that was my problem. I was not looking for a manual system. I'm not used to people answering questions manually. I was looking for some <laughs> form, you know what I mean? I'm so used to seeing forms that I didn't even think about like saying, hey, how do I do this? So uh, that's we got a whole team just answer the question. Yeah, I think it's a lot more personalized. Now I had another question about the donating of crypto. Mm. Let's say someone's podcast is on there and people are donating crypto to the podcast, but the podcaster has not claimed that podcast yet. So in a year later, let's say the podcaster goes and says, "Hey, that's my podcast." Does he get all that crypto that's been donated for the last year? Or what happens with that crypto that was donated for the last year? Uh, yes, if he comes and claims, so if we check, he really owns this podcast, he can have the all the like donations belongs to, to, to himself. That should be fine. But I still like <laughs> recommend you to go earlier. You know? Right. We just launched this program. So if you just one after one year, so that is that accumulated a lot and you do not know so so you do not know how many bugs you have already got already so right right yeah yeah so so this is brand new this program yeah this is brand new and also you can just start and like or start a brand new channel for example just start from castbox instead of like from from itunes or other other place and just create a account and all the donations are directly linked into into your system and for sure, in the future, we need to maybe, how to say, we maybe de develop a system to easily verify so, so the, the ownership. I think that is what is the meaning for blockchain as well. So for digital content, the blockchain's value is to make a like unified payout system, a shared content pool and shared 
different user pool. So you just need one identity and you do not need to claim your thing from this platform or from other platform. So for, for ourselves, for example, for CastBox, CastBox is a like platform now for podcasters. But after the content box, which is our uh, blockchain project, which that one is launched, our aim is to make that into a digital content blockchain. So after that, so you got registered in that blockchain, so you get your own like identity. So you can upload whatever you, you have. So you can just uh, share your image, so short videos, and not limited to audio, but all the right. like the copyright belongs to you. So so all the tokens will be uh, attributed to you as well. So you do not need to claim, for example, from iTunes and claim one in YouTube. So that is why we want to build the blockchain. So that is the question we want to solve, especially for the digital content industry. So you are a podcaster, so you know how hard it, it is, right? So you got different platform. You need to like distribute those things out here, there. So spend a lot of time to, to man, manage them. And like, so that, that is really headache. So that, that make your time less how to create your content. So we want you to just focus on creating your content and take care and we take care of other things. So I know the um, wallet seems to only be on the app, not on the website, um, if I'm correct. Uh, yeah. So does that mean you can only also – I guess that also means you can only donate crypto from the app, not on the website. Yeah. 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 Well, on this stage, now only in the app, but maybe in, uh, but I think in the future. So I think within 2019, so all the like wallet thing and can, can be launched on, also on – website well most people use the phone anyway so that's probably the better that's probably the better place to have it. well i do have to tell you i think that your layout i really do like your service I, I think your layout's nice on your site i think your app works nice like i said i like your that i can import my subscriptions i like how i can share it on twitter i like the fact that you have a wallet and you're moving into that now i want to get into content box more about content box Tony, was there anything you wanted to ask her about CastBox before we move into Content Box? Well, I just wanted to say that it's really genius to listen to people's feedback and to incorporate it into your product. It seems like that is one of the secrets to your success that you've built on all the functionality that uh, people listening to podcasts really want. And it shows in the, your uh, growth. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's cool that I, I didn't know you could search uh, words in a podcast and find it. I think I want to I want to test that out when we get through. I think that's pretty interesting. Is there anything you want to tell us about Castbox before we move in the content box conversation? I don't want to miss anything. No, I think we are okay now. Yeah. Okay. Well, now tell us about Content Box. Let's really get into that because this is like, if I'm correct, this is kind of like the YouTube and more type thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. This content boxing come to our mind because we, we have done cast box to for two years. So we like keep in touch with like content creators like like you guys, YouTuber uh, uh, podcasters and some YouTubers also like convert their content into podcasts uh, onto our platform. And on the other side, we, we like uh, got contact with a lot of content audience, for example. So digital content is... Uh, industry that blockchain can play a, a great role in in this area actually so now this uh, industry have huge potential but there are some big problems cannot be solved for example for content creators so like podcasters so you did a very good job already but for example for there are a lot of long tail creators and they also provide good content, but it's really hard for them to find channels to monetize. And also it's really hard the, for them to directly reach their audience, reach their consumers. And so they need to spend a lot of time to thinking about uh, how to do the marketing part, how to do the operation thing. And it's really hard for them to focus on on those like content creation. And also for those like listeners for the user part so they spend time to make contribution actually so they spend time to listen to to see those uh content but sometimes they they still need to pay to to get things and they do a lot of like helpful work like leaving comments and doing the sharing but they 
didn't get rewarded at all. Actually, nowadays, the time is really precious. They spend time to help to improve the content industry, but they do not get involved, uh, they didn't get rewarded. There's one example. So when we just start, so you, you know, we covered a lot of different languages, but when we start, when we were a small team, so we, we, we do not have uh, so, so many like bandwidths to make the translation, make the localization thing. So our maybe the UI are just based Google translation. So there are a lot of like our audience, they, they just become our volunteers. So they come to us and say, uh, we, we help you to localize your app or your website into my own languages. We want to say thank you, but we do not know how to do that. So because we are a free app, we do not have premium content those days. So we, only the only thing we can do is maybe send them some like T-shirt or something with the Castbox logo. So that is a thing make us thinking about how to design a system so to make sure that everybody can be rewarded based on their high quality content and their contribution to the community. And on the other side, for those advertisers, they do not need to log in into different platform to manage their ROIs. And for those different platforms, even they do not need to maybe compete for those big IPs. They just use the share user pool and they can just focus on increased uh, user experience. And yeah, and for those like the developers and also they, they do not need to spend so many time on how to integrate on different platforms, they can just focus on their product. So I think we should build a like a blockchain infrastructure to, to enable a like unified payout system, a shared content pool and a shared user pool. So that is how we come to the content box idea. Now is content box live yet? Uh, yeah, we already got the content box. So how how do I say the uh, I think the mainland will be online within 2019. But now you already seen the wallet has already been integrated. And also we are just doing the, the technology we seeing like behind. And also there, beside CastBox, we already have three different other like app integrated into our, our chain already. And maybe just because I'm doing it on the website, so is the... When I go to the website, it um, well, it looks more like it's um, raising. I don't see uh, any place to upload my content. So actually, Content Box is a blockchain infrastructure. So so you won't directly upload your content into Content Box. Okay, that's where I was getting confused. Yeah, yeah. So actually, you will integrate your content app onto Content Box. And for those content app, you, for example, so you, you integrate CastBox into content box, and then you upload your podcast in CastBox, but you can get box by this blockchain system. And for example, maybe in the future, we got a like video box something, for example, the video box will be integrated easily on content box and you upload your content, the video content into the video box and you get integrated into the system. Tony, have you looked at this yet, this content box? No, I'm not as good a multitasker as you, Gary. <laughs> I've looked at, <laughs> the, I looked at the website for CastBox and I downloaded CastBox, but I, and I've just looked at the briefly at the content box website. So I'm excited to see where it goes. I'm excited to uh, have people donate to us directly. Uh, it looks like uh, we're going to have a really bright future in content payments going forward. Yeah, so actually content box will be like, uh, we'll be have three, we'll have three different components. So one is a box payout that is a fast and secure blockchain to carry out multi-party payments. And the other is the box password that is a blockchain based identity and attribution uh, service across different applications. And also the box unpack that is a turnkey solution for like small and medium sized partners as well as big partners to set up um, their like integrate their app onto the content box easily. So you can consider content box as a like public blockchain design specific for uh, digital content. And there will be a lot of different content app integrate into it. And you will just use your only password to be logged in and share your content 
or like enjoy the content and get the token just rewarded or donated. Well, for anyone who's interested, just so because we didn't say it, if you're interested in looking at the site for Content Box, go to contentbox.1. It's contentbox1.1. And if you're interested in Castbox, well, that's castbox.fm. Yeah, so Castbox is the first app integrated onto Content Box. So this is the logic. So we can build an app and put it on Castbox. I mean, Content Box. Yeah, yes, yes. Would we go to Box Unpack and that's where we would handle that? Yeah, yeah. But that is not ready yet, but that will be a like important component. Fantastic. What is the timeline on the different elements of Content Box? Yeah, so Content Box, so now we already got the like token integrated into the Cast Box app. And uh, the Box Passport will be launched within 2018. And in the middle of 2019, the test net of, of the Box payout system will be online. And within 2019, so the whole main chain of Content Box will be ready. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, we have something a lot to look forward to. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds pretty exciting, Tony. It's very exciting. Well, we appreciate you coming on the show, and we look forward to, like I said, I, I think it's a great-looking service, personally. And I know your team is going to be at the conference I host in Philadelphia, Podcast Movement, uh, at the end of the month. So I look forward to uh, meeting with your team and seeing what we can uh, possibly do. So I'm very excited, and I'm very excited about CastBox. <laughs> and we are looking forward to see you in person. Yeah, for sure. You know, will you be there? <laughs> we will have team members be there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do want to thank you for taking the time to uh, come on the show and explain all this to us. Like I said, it's uh, very interesting to us since we're into crypto and into podcasting. And, uh, and I appreciate it very much. Tony, anything you want to say before we wrap this up? Thank you for spending time with us. We really appreciate uh, learning all about it. And also, thank you so thank you so much for your time for inviting us and give us the opportunity to like introduce our project to your audience. Okay, we're back. I hope you enjoyed today's show, uh, Tony. What you th- I enjoyed the interview with. Well, you know, I was taking notes because I'm like, how do you get to be so big so fast? And uh, it's really one of the things that I believe in is listen to your customer. I mean. They're, they have a huge team working with the customers, figuring out what they want and adding those features into the product. And so uh, I think that's a little, a little bit contrast to Steve Jobs, who you know does what he wants, and then later uh, people are like, oh, we really wanted that. And sometimes Apple does have to backpedal and uh, put, put some features in that uh, people really wanted. Well, sometimes, though, you got to like uh, go ahead and put stuff in there they don't know they want to. That's true. You know, like a Ford said, if everybody had their way, they'd still be driving buggies. <laughs> they'd be driving buggies. It's true. Just faster buggies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe <laughs> maybe they'd have bigger buggy whips. <laughs> I always say about technology, that glass guy that made that buggy whip before they went out must have made a heck of a buggy whip. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks, everybody, for listening and subscribing and for leaving reviews. We really appreciate your reviews on iTunes. I know that we have well over 100 five-star reviews now. So if you enjoy this show, please go there and give us a review. And you can subscribe. Find everywhere to subscribe to our show at CryptoCousins.com slash subscribe. Uh, Tony, anything else you want to add? I would say uh, everybody hodl on. It's, uh, it may be a bleak crypto winter, but uh, we are excited for the future and the future of technology around Bitcoin. So that's why we're doing the conference. Sounds good. Hey, thanks for listening, everybody. And until next week, love you guys. Thanks for listening to the Crypto Cousins podcast. Please share this podcast with anyone you know that is interested in cryptocurrency. Your friends can subscribe on iTunes at CryptoCousins.com slash iTunes and on Android at CryptoCousins.com slash play. If you want to know more about Tony or Gary, just go to TonySicala.com or GaryLeland.com. Make sure and join us on the next episode, and thanks for listening.
The Crypto Cousins podcast and information in the podcast are not intended as investment advice. Cryptocurrencies are risky. Never invest more than you can afford to lose. Always seek professional advice before making any investment. Investing in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies may present tremendous risks. Please understand that you are using any and all information available on or through the Crypto Cousins podcast at your own risk. <laughs>